Bagha Jatin, the Indian Tiger. Amra Morbo, Jogot Jagbe. We shall die to awaken the nation. These were the words of one of the most formidable opponent of the British regime, who motivated thousands of Indians to go to war for their independence. Words of determination and ambition that turned into a battle cry for the entire nation. And the man at the hem of the battle is the unapologetic and indomitable independence activist Baghajatin, whose prowess on and off the battlefield was a source of strength and hope for his people in their quest for freedom. This is the story of the uncrowned king of the Indian independence movement, whose sole aim was to awaken his nation to the state of unrestrained freedom that it dreamt of under the British rule. Early Life Bagha Jatin was born as Jatindranath Mukherjee into a Brahmin family on 7th December 1879 in the Kaya Gram village in Kushtia, located in present-day Bangladesh. His father, Umesh Chandra Mukherjee, was a respectable man who was deeply knowledgeable about Brahmanic studies and also nurtured a liking for horses. Unfortunately, he passed away when Jatindranath was only five years old. His mother, Sharath Shashi, then shifted the remaining family from their ancestral house at Sadhuhati in Jenaida to her parents' house in Kayagram. He had an elder sister named Binodbala. Jatindranath grew up to be a strong and caring individual under the strict but compassionate guidance of his mother. She was also a talented poet and introduced Jatin to the work of Yogendra Vidya Bhushan and Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. Such was his fascination with religious literature and plays that he was frequently engaged in their enactments, playing the roles of deeply religious Hindu characters. This passion soon spread to nationalist stories and he urged the production and subsequent spread of such work in his village to foster similar feelings of patriotism among his people. These were the beginnings of the independence activist who would later adopt patriotism as his religion and engage in more serious and valiant acts to secure freedom for his country. Education and Marriage Jatin received his school education from the Krishnanagar Anglo Vernacular School or AV School in Calcutta. After passing the entrance examination in 1895, he enrolled in the Calcutta Central College, presently the Khudiram Bose College, to pursue a degree in fine arts. He simultaneously worked as a stenographer with Mr. Atkinson in order to increase the chances of securing a job. He got married to Indubala Banerjee in the year 1900 with whom he had four children. Unfortunately, the death of his eldest son Atindra only three years after his birth was a huge shock to the family. To deal with that, Jatin took his wife and sister with him on a pilgrimage and visited Sri Bholanand Giri in Haridwar. He returned to his village, Koya, in 1906 and later had three more children with his wife, two sons named Tejendra and Pirendra, along with a daughter named Ashalata, becoming Bagha Jatin. The legendary evolution of Jatindranath Mukherjee to Bagha Jatin is a well-documented tale that portrays the strength and courage of the fearless freedom fighter that he grew up to be. Soon after his return to his native village in 1906, Jatin became aware of the presence of a tiger in his area. He set out to find it in the nearby jungle and eventually came face to face with the Royal Bengal Tiger that was the cause of all the disturbance. A fight ensued between Jatin and the tiger 
that, according to some sources, lasted for about three hours, even though he sustained severe wounds in the fight. Jatin was able to kill it single-handedly with a small dagger that he struck across the tiger's neck, resulting in its immediate death. He was treated by a renowned surgeon, Dr. Suresh Prasad Sarvadhikari, who was so impressed with Jatin's act of bravery that he went on to publish an article about the incident in the English press. Jatindranath received immense praise from the Bengal government, who bestowed him with a silver shield that had the scene of him killing the tiger engraved upon it. From that moment, he came to be known as Bagha Jatin, which literally stood for Tiger Jatin. This incident gave birth to the revolutionary leader Bagha Jatin, who would later stand up and face the British forces and fight against them for his country in the same manner that he fought against the formidable tiger to protect his village from danger, political activities. Bagha Jatin's participation in India's freedom struggle deepened following his acquaintance with Swami Vivekananda, to whom he was introduced to by Sister Nivedita, Vivekananda's Irish disciple. His meetings with Vivekananda started from his college days. Jatin was deeply inspired by the latter's thoughts and ideologies about society and their independence. The belief that humanity needed to secure their political freedom from their spiritual growth took roots in his mind and became the foundation of his fight against the British. With support from Vivekananda, Jatin recruited young volunteers who were dedicated in serving their nation and began training them to help their countrymen in times of need. Swami Vivekananda further trained Jatin to conquer his five senses and persuaded him to train in the Ambu Goha Gymnasium. It was here that he met his mentor Sachin Banerjee, the renowned author Yogendra Vidya Bhushan's son. Afterwards, Jatin became discouraged and fed up with the colonial education system and left for Muzaffarpur in the year 1899 working as a secretary of barrister Pringle Kennedy, Anushilan Samiti and Jugandar. Bagha Jatin is most credited for his involvement in the Anushilan Samiti that was started in the early 1900s and later on the Jugandar party, a secret militant political outfit that engaged in revolutionary activities to eradicate the British presence from India. Jatin acted as the principal leader of Jugandar. The origin of the party came from Jatin's meeting with the well-known political activist Sri Aurobindo Ghosh, who urged him to create a secret society that will serve as the meeting ground for the various revolutionaries of the freedom struggle, while simultaneously acting as the platform to impart training for the young recruits to fight against the British forces. This gave birth to the revolutionary party known as Jugantar that was created with the support of a number of revolutionary leaders including Barindra Ghosh. Bagha Jatin was appointed as commander-in-chief. Jatin focused on building a decentralized organization that could function even with the loss of a few of its units as opposed to Barindra Ghosh's highly centralized one. This approach proved to be extremely helpful later on when a number of revolutionaries were arrested as part of the Alipur conspiracy case that involved the murder of two English women under a mistaken identity. Even though Jatin was accused to be one of the principal party leaders, he was able to escape punishment due to the nature of his decentralized party structure. With the deportation of Barindra Ghosh, Jatin took over as the leader of the party and its further activities. 
Under his guidance, the party grew to be a successful organization that had its presence all over India and abroad in Europe, America and other parts of Asia. Howrah Sibpur Conspiracy Case Also known as the Howrah Gang Case of 1910, it was a critical event of the Indian independence movement that brought to light the numerous revolutionaries and their activities in eliminating the British presence from India. The case originated with the investigation of the activities of the Anushilan Samiti by Inspector Shamshul Alam, who was a part of the Bengal police working as the deputy superintendent and intelligence officer. He was trying to find the link between the several murders and dacoities associated with Samiti. However, while preparing to uncover the activities of the organization, Alam was murdered on 24th January 1910 by Biren Datta Gupta, a fellow freedom fighter who revealed Jatin's name as the leader. This was followed by the arrest of Bagha Jatin on 27th January 1910, along with 46 other members of the Samiti in what came to be popularly known as the Howrah Sibpur Conspiracy Case. However, the lack of sufficient evidence to establish any valid links led to Jatin's acquittal in 1911 after spending a year in prison along with Narendra Nath Bhattacharya M. N. Roy. The Hindu-German Conspiracy As different countries were engaged in a war for power, India too was engaged in a battle for freedom from the British. When the World War I began in 1914, Bagha Jatin took the opportunity to secure independence for his own country through a mutiny orchestrated with help from Germany. For this purpose, when the German Crown Prince visited Kolkata in 1912, Jatin approached him for a promise of assistance in the freedom struggle through the supply of required weapons. This international plan, formulated under the leadership and guidance of Jatin, came to be known as the Hindu-German Conspiracy, the German Plot or the Zimmerman Plan. The Berlin Committee or the Indian Independence Committee was formed in Berlin as a pro-India organization with Virendranath Chattopadhyay as its head. The committee had ties with the Jugantar Party in India as well as the Ghadar Party in America. It was able to make arrangements with the German government to lend them the necessary armaments required for the Indian freedom fighters to declare independence from the British rule. Jatin as the commander-in-chief and M. N. Roy as Jatin's right-hand man were tasked with raising the initial expenditure for executing the plan. They did this through a series of armed robberies that was referred to as boat decoities and the taxicab decoities. Death in the Battle of Balasore The German ships carrying the weapons promised by the German government were scheduled to be delivered in Balasore near the Odisha coast. To maintain communication, a shop called the Universal Emporium was set up in Balasore by the activists. Jatin, along with other revolutionaries, reached the destination and hid in the nearby Kapti Pada village in Mayurbhanj district of Odisha to wait for the arrival of the armaments. However, their plan was foiled by the intervention of the British police who came across the information regarding the shipment through foreign spies and were able to stop the ships from reaching the Indian East Coast. They also declared rewards to people who would reveal the location of the masterminds behind the plan. Hearing this news, Jatin and his comrades left their hiding place and reached a trench near Balasore on 9th September 1915. This would be his final battleground in the fight against the British. 
upon coming face to face with several police officials. A gunfight ensued between the armed police and the activists that reportedly lasted for 75 minutes. Even though Jatin's side fought ferociously against the much better equipped British forces, they eventually got heavily wounded in the fight. When it drew to a close, a severely injured Jatin was carried to the Balasore City Hospital, where the very next day, on 10th September 1915, he passed away at the age of 35. He indeed died to awaken his nation, as his death galvanized the entire country to pick up his battle and to continue their fight against their colonial oppressors. Legacy Bagha Jatin was immensely respected for his bravery, not only by his countrymen, but also by foreign officials, including a British police officer, Charles Tegart, who once stated that if Jatindranath was an Englishman, his statue would have been built next to Nelson's at Trafalgar Square. As a tribute to one of the most formidable fighter India has ever witnessed, the film Bagha Jatin, directed by Hiran Moisen, was released in 1958. Later in 1997, the Government of India's film division also produced a film based on Jatin's life. This was directed by Hari Sadhan Das Gupta. The Indian government released a poster stamp in honor of Bagha Jatin in 1970 in remembrance of his contributions to the freedom struggle. A statue of Jatin was installed in the Barbati Girls High School in Balasore, where he gave up his life in the battle against the British. In addition to naming a locality of Kolkata after him as Bagha Jatin, a memorial park was constructed in his name in Chashakhand near Balasore, as a tribute to one of the greatest freedom fighters of India. A biography showcasing the life and struggles of Jatin was written by Prithvendra Mukherjee, titled Bagha Jatin, Life and Times of Jatindranath Mukherjee. The book was published by the National Book Trust in January 2013. Conclusion From being Jatindranath Mukherjee, the young man who embraced the roles of God-loving characters as a child, to being Bagha Jatin, the relentless independence activist. He is one of the most dedicated and illustrious figure in the Indian history, having spent the major part of his life embroiled in conspiracies, perhaps even thriving on their complexities. Jatin always emerged as the victorious mastermind behind some of the most daring incidents India has ever witnessed. Just like the child he was, Bagha Jatin wholeheartedly embraced every role he was thrust into, seamlessly weaving an incredible tale of courage, spirit and determination that would echo in the minds and hearts of his people years later, inspiring them to carry forward the legacy of his country to greater heights.